for for people who don't know, P- Pig Vomit is is Howard Stern's actual old boss at W. Pig Virus. Pig, Pig Virus. You Pig Virus. Yes. Was yes. the name so of the real guy? Some reason for some reason he had to change the name. Yeah, but but he called the real guy Pig Virus, and then in the movie he's called Pig. Virus. Well, <laughs> glad he was sensitive. <laughs> 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 How are you? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm not too. For having me. I'm not too. I'm not as good as you. Best actor, pretty good. <laughs> yeah, not bad. Yeah, feels good. <laughs> yes. Yeah. How do you yeah, fi- cool. how do you find that thing? Is that a phone call? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, it is. I mean, I got a phone call from my manager, uh, who, who who yeah called me and told me I didn't watch it on TV. You could watch it on TV, but I didn't have the guts to watch it on TV, so I was asleep. I said, I'm just going to sleep and somebody will tell me what happened. And that's what happens. Is that like avoidance? Like if I don't watch it, I don't have to know whether it came up or not? Yes. Pure avoidance. Just fear. They're just not wanting to, just nerves and fear and anxiety and not wanting to, to know. And somebody else will tell me it'll be easier to hear from somebody else. Is there a, uh, is there a celebration? Is there a woo-hoo, a, you know? Oh, sure. Of course. Yes. No, there's great joy. And then, and then, it's a, then it's a wonderful thing. And it really is. And I can feel good about it. I definitely do. Very much so. I'm, I'm glad to hear. And I loved the in and out uh, when you won the Golden Globe, the picture of you at in and out Burger. Now, Had I, I been in that. Los Angeles, I would have gone an in and out Burger after finding out that I'd gotten them. I would definitely. I love in and out Burger. It's just not as fun to go to Five Guys, you know? No, it isn't. It's not quite good. <laughs> yeah. I like them. Yeah. But it's not quite as fun. Um, I, so I love the holdovers. Um, so I'm trying to be careful about how I say this. I know when <laughs> Alexander Payne was making it, he had an era on his mind and uh-huh. he was thinking about the 1970s. The, he, so he was very careful about the cinematographer that he chose and the director of photography yeah. that he chose. He was very careful about the coloring of the film. He was very careful about like the poster of the film, all sort of looking back into those eras of like 70s films, like maybe like The Graduate mm-hmm. or something like that. Mm-hmm. Does that impact your acting performance at all? Are you acting like any other film, any other sort of modern film? But does the knowledge that he sees this as sort of an older style film impact your acting? Probably at some levels, yes. I mean, it does. But in in kind of just an unconscious, imaginative way, in saying these things to me, it seeds something in my imagination that feeds into kind of what I wanted the guy to look like. And, you know, whether it's I mean, I think I think mostly what that says to me is very kind of human and humanist filmmaking, you know, stuff that was very kind of centered on kind of characters and humans. So I know that like kind of, you know, it's it's going to be very sort of naturalistic and gritty and things like that and very kind of like tactile kind of movie and sort of acting. Um, so it, it, it does all feed in there. I don't consciously think I was doing anything different, but I must have been, you know, I mean, it's like something about it is manifesting and is kind of. Kind of something, you know, something sparking in my imagination that must be doing something, you know, so it fits the it fits the tone of the 1970s. I understand what you mean. It wasn't like you were saying like, oh, I'm going to be like Dustin Hoffman here. I'm going to move my no, arms I mean, like Dustin Hoffman. Or, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I wasn't consciously doing anything, but it's such an evocative thing to me to, to say that, that it's operating on my mind somehow. You know, um, the, the, the character is uh, Paul Hunnam, the, the, the boarding school teacher. Really interesting character, sort of curmudgeonly, um, a loner, not well liked by the students or or the faculty, kind of bullied. Also, kind of sweet, um, incredibly smart, um, and 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 sort of desperate to be liked, and and has all kinds of uh, kinds of problems. When you read the script and you start to investigate this character, what resonates to you about this character? Uh, I think that sense of someone who has created an elaborate kind of persona that they're hiding behind a little bit. There's something about that that's very meaningful to me. Somebody sort of, you know, I went to schools like this. I was taught by guys like this. I grew up around my father's colleagues. They're these incredibly smart guys hiding behind this sort of smarts, you know, hiding a lot of like damage and insecurity behind intelligence and holding it all together behind that. And I thought that was very interesting and, and, and that kind of thing. And watching that sort of fall away from a person is interesting. Even though in Alexander's movies, what's great is it falls away enough and then it goes back on. 
You know, it's like it doesn't ever the armor never fully comes off of the people in his movies. Like they're still they still will put their their armature on and they still they never totally free of themselves, I don't think. Which which is kind of actually real life. I don't think it, you know, yeah. people don't change yeah. that much. No. They just grow a little tiny bit. But hold on, you were you were yeah. saying so you, this I mean I should say for people who haven't seen this, it's said at this like New England. Uh, we don't really have schools like this in Canada. Or at least I didn't go to schools like this in Canada. Like, well, you must have. This. You must have schools like this. In you Canada. think so? Schools like this, you must. Yeah, I guess there's <laughs> Upper Canada your College. Ties, I know about yeah, it. Yeah, your ties to England. You know, I mean, they're all an imitation of British schooling. You must have stuff like this somewhere in Canada. You must. Right. These kind of schools. I guess so. I, I you know, I'm, I'm from a weird part of Canada, like way out on the East Coast, and I sort of grew up on a barge in the middle of the North Atlantic, so I don't know about this at all. It was, it was more like Lord of the Flies than uh, an education. But, Excellent. But, 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 but you, you went, you, you went, I'm going to hear from my home province now. That's uh, fantastic. You, you, um, you go to this, you, 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 you're going, to, you went to this boarding school that felt, felt yes. like this? Oh, yes, very much so. I went to a boarding school only about 10 years after this movie takes place. I did not board there, but I went to a school like this, and there still were a lot of these men, and they were all men who had been teaching there forever and who were kind of bitter and sort of stuck in their lives but had but had found this thing that to them was you know was comfortable, and they were there, and they were masters of their domain or whatever you want to say in these places. And so... I was familiar with it. Yeah, very much so. And one of the one of the actors in the the, the main um a, a, a Dominic Sessa, the co-star of this yeah. film, uh, one of the students at the school, right? He was a student at one of the school. We shot at five different schools to create the one school because each school had sort of a feature of it that worked and then he made sort of one school out of it. And there was a school called Deerfield Academy and he was a student there. And they happened to find him. They went to do a kind of general call to see if there were kids they could use as extras or in little parts with a few lines. And they had not found a person to play that part yet. And he came in and now there's a, there's a way in which that guy looked seventies. There's something very seventies looking about him already. He seems like something out of one of those movies. And so it, it that fit the whole vibe of it too. You know, as you were talking at the beginning about what is it about the seventies thing? Like he found somebody that looked seventies to act with. You know, so it was kind of great. He also found someone for you to act against that has never acted before. Yeah, but I you wouldn't have known it. The kid was incredibly grounded, smart, very good, really good. I I didn't I didn't ever feel that I was working with somebody hugely inexperienced or anything like that. He was remarkably calm, remarkably confident about it. You know, and he he was a former athlete, hockey player. And I often think athletes make good actors because they they want to get in there and play the game, and they want to know what do you want me to do. You know, what do you, you know, coach, tell me what to do. And so I think he had that sort of attitude, good work ethic. I felt like I was working with a guy who had done a bunch of films already. That that being said, is there? I'm always interested in the the idea of like a, a beginner's mind that you can only be a beginner once. So you, this mm -hmm. actor who's been in the business for a couple of decades now, right? And yeah, mm -hmm. uh, when you have been on a lot of lot of things, just a lot of TV, a lot of film, and you're watching someone across from you act in a big thing or kind of act really for the very very first time, is there anything you're you're experiencing? Anything you're acknowledging? Anything you see? I. Yes. And I think that there was a way in which his freshness and his newness and his beginner's mind made me slow down a little bit and be a little bit more reflective about things and actually sort of go, OK, here I am. I'm going to be putting into effect all of this experience I supposedly have. Is it does it work? Is it good? You know, like, do I have this right? In a way, can, uh, uh, help me understand that better. What, what do you mean? I reflect. I just sort of felt like I could. You know, because you get in there with somebody who's done it a million times, there's a certain, not autopilot, but there's a kind of practiced thing. I can get in there and do your thing fast for you. You know what I mean? But he would, he was slowing down and he didn't know certain technical things, or he would have a lot of questions about his character, or he wasn't sure about something. He just was more kind of thoughtful and kind of approaching it new and open in this way that made me slow down and, and maybe just go like, whoa, 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 wait a second. Like, I can be a little bit more thoughtful about this than I usually am. You know what I mean? I can be a little bit more, let me see, you know, let me just slow down for a second like this guy is 
and sort of like not not worry about getting it done and getting on to the next thing. You know what I mean? And there was something very kind of lovely about that. Right, because when you first started going on to sets, when you first started acting, you were that guy. You were like, what is this? Where is that light? What do I do here? <laughs> yes, I was that guy. I totally was that guy. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know if I had that effect on anybody, but I definitely... I definitely, I don't know if I had the same effect, but I was definitely that guy for sure, you know, and he's learning and it's that learning process makes me, made me slow down and enjoy it and savor it and reflect on it a little bit. Um, your, your, um, so your, your dad was the president of Yale. Is that right? Yes. And then yes. it went on to work in, so, so surrounded by academia, similar kind of thing to what we're yeah. talking about here. All, all teachers all over the place in my family. Everybody's a teacher. Yeah. And then um, your mom was a teacher. When you won your Golden Globe, I thought the, the speech and the dedication was really uh, lovely. Just take a listen to this. It's a movie about a teacher. Uh, I play a teacher in it. My whole family, they're teachers. All of them, going back generations. Teachers are good people. Got to respect them. They do a good thing. It's a tough job. So this is for teachers as well. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Why did you, um, why did you do that? Well, because I think I had been thinking a lot about people have been talking to me about the setting and the fact of a teacher and, you know, what, is he a good teacher? Is he a bad teacher? Does he learn to be a better teacher? I was thinking about teaching a lot. It The whole thing made me think about my family a lot, too. You know, and I was drawing on a lot of memories and things from my upbringing and stuff. So teaching and teachers was very present to me and something very moving to me about the end of this movie when he says goodbye to the kid giving away stuff, but whatever. You know, when he says goodbye to the kid, you realize the teachers do that over and over and over and over again. They say goodbye to kids that they become attached to. Good teachers, they get attached to a lot of them. This guy was attached to one, and he's never going to see this kid again. And there's something about it that just teaching was very much in the forefront of my mind. And while I've been walking around talking about this movie, it's still in the forefront of my mind. So when you get up on stage, you think to yourself, I'm going to, I'm going to make sure. I did actually. I sort of thought, yeah, I'm going to say something about teachers, you know, because it's like, it's tough right now in America for teachers. I mean, it's always tough for teachers. It's a tough job. I thought about being a teacher and you know, there was a kind of an assumption I would be a teacher because everybody was a teacher in my family. So of course, everybody's just going to go into teaching. It's like the family business, you know, but I didn't. And what, what, know, what, I what happened? Why not? I don't think I would have been any good at it. I don't think I would have been very good at it. And I think the idea, I mean, I loved acting. So that's really what I loved. And I don't think the idea of spending all of my time studying, you know, 15th century Portuguese poetry or something. I just was <laughs> like, this is not going to work for me. You know, so it was like, I, I just, it wasn't going to, it wasn't going to. I needed more adventure and excitement in my life. I needed the action-packed life of a professional entertainer. <laughs> when when did you know? You said you I loved acting. When did you know you loved acting? Always. I always loved play acting, and I always loved dressing up and being a character from the time I was a little kid, even just running around the house. I was just a thing we were, I was constantly doing, and my brother and sister were constantly doing with each other. And the, I always looked forward every year to the kind of silly school play that we would do, whatever I didn't matter, you know, play a tree kind of thing. I was out of my mind with excitement to, to be in a, in a play. So I always loved it. It wasn't until I sort of graduated from college, I thought maybe I can do this professionally. Maybe I could actually do it. It's a, it's a funny decision to make um, and, and, and not to... Um presuppose anything, but um, I always find the idea of like choosing a path in the arts where it's it's a hard road. Grat gratitude yeah. is assumed, but it's a hard road and a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of the time it doesn't work out. Yes. And, and you got a, a dad who's, I mean, this might be TMI, but I'll ask it. You have a father who is uh, the president of Yale. Then it's like commissioner of Major League Baseball for a while. Is that right? Yeah, very briefly. Very briefly. Yep high level stuff in in, mm -hmm. in the United States <laughs> to choose to be a, an actor uh -huh. full of a life full of risk not an easy discussion I would assume with, with the folks no no uh well no actually you first of all one of the things I have is my dad died before I made the choice to be an actor uh, but yeah. I think part of the reason I did decide to do it was his death it was very destabilizing. But it was also you watch the guy who did all this remarkable stuff and was gone like that. But also he was 
10,000% a guy who would say to everybody, you have to do something you love. If you can do something you love, you have to do that. And I know that in his mind, he said it once to, after seeing me in a play in, in college, he said, you're doing the thing you're supposed to be doing. And I knew that in his mind, it was the right thing for me to do and I should do it. And so it took me some courage because I was scared to do it. But I did do it because I think he would have totally been fine with me doing it. Absolutely. I, 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 I can relate to you on that. I'm, I, I started doing yeah. this kind of work. Um, I, I got to tell my dad I got this, a job at the CBC. That's awesome. And I was moving to Toronto and he died awesome. and he died two weeks later. But at least he died knowing, that's awesome. you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing is I know my dad died before I made the decision to do it, before I did it. He never saw me act professionally, nothing. But I know that he thought I should do it. I know that he would have been fine with it, and I know he thought I should do it. So somehow I know he knows I did it. And so, you know, whatever. That's, 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 a, that's, a, and that's a beautiful thing. A lot of the times it's like, oh, he, uh, oh, he died, so, yeah. so I can do it, you know? <laughs> well, yeah, now I'm free to do whatever the hell I want. No, but it's, no, he would have absolutely, he would have been fine with it. He wouldn't have had a problem with it. He just wasn't, you know, he took weird risks. It was a weird thing to go from being the president of Yale to being the commissioner of baseball. And a lot of people were like, what the hell are you doing? And what is this guy doing here? You know, I mean, he was a kind of a risk taker in his own way. You know, he wasn't sure he was doing the right thing taking this leap into a completely different world. Ah, something beautiful about that. Uh, so yeah. you, you come out of Yale. Um, Yale acting, I'm assuming, shakespearean e stuff, uh, pretty high the level. School. I went to the graduate school there. Yeah, they do a lot of Shakespeare training. Yeah. You, yeah. you come out of that school, and one of the first roles, if not the first role, the big role you get, is the is the pig vomit in in private parts. I'm not, sure. I, and I'm not saying that with a joke because I'm of the Whoa. age that that was a killer movie for me. It's a great movie. I've, I had, I gotta tell you, it holds up. It's a great movie. What a thing though it's to come great. from Shakespeare Yale Drama School to. Well, yes, to come from Shakespeare to, to, into that, but I was all for that. I mean, it was the kind of thing. I mean, to do Shakespeare would be great. I didn't do much Shakespeare. But then to land in that. But, you know, in a way, a character like that is kind of got this big size. I mean, it's a big, ridiculous, over-the-top clown part, you know, that has its, that, you know, isn't that far from feeling Shakespearean in some ways. I mean, it's got all these kind of big, crazy, screaming arias that I have in this thing. And it's kind of, you know, there's something about it. You know, the, the scope and the size starts to feel a little bit epic. With that character, it's a great movie. It really is. For for people who don't know, P Pig Vomit is is Howard Stern's actual old boss at W. Pig Virus. Pig, Pig Virus. You Pig Virus. Yes. Was yes. the name so of the real guy? Some reason for some reason he had to change the name. Yeah, but but he called the real guy Pig Virus, and then in the movie he's called Pig. Virus. Well, I'm glad he was sensitive. So, <laughs> of all the things that Howard Stern could change in his life. Yeah, totally. I'm like, did the guy trademark his name? Like, I'm like, what's the brain? Is he going to get sued? Did you call him Pig Virus? It was really funny. Anyway. So for people who don't know, Pig Virus was the was this real real guy, uh, uh, the, the the head of WM, WNBC on, uh, uh, in, in, um, that Howard would work for. It was driving, Howard drove him crazy. He used to put him on the air. He used to go to his office. It was his real foil. I heard a story about you. I don't know if this is true or not, which is a very really Howard Stern way to ask a question, by the way. Uh, yes. I, heard, <laughs> I, I, I heard this I heard this thing about you. You got to tell me whether this is true exactly. or not. That's totally right. <laughs> that's, very, that's, that's very Howard Stern right there. <laughs> it is. It is. That um, you didn't know this was a real person when you when you signed on? No. And I, I mean, I'd listened to Howard, but not enough to know all the sorts of ins and outs. And so at one point around the middle of doing the movie, he said to me, Boy, how'd you, you must have studied this guy. I mean, how'd you, how'd you get this guy down so perfectly? And I thought, what are you talking about? And he said, well, I mean, did you watch footage of guy? Did you listen to him? I said, this was a real guy? And he said, yes. And I was horrified, actually, because I thought, I'm making this man look like the biggest jackass on the planet. And this is a real person uh -huh. who is now going to have to walk around their life. And people are going to be like, is that you in that movie? And I felt, I felt bad in a way. It didn't stop me from pursuing the, the character the way he needed to be, but I was shocked to know that I was playing a real person and they were gonna have to see this movie and their family and kids are gonna have to see this movie and go, that's my dad in this movie. That's I mean that's a that's a that's a lovely way of thinking about it. 
Well, it's an interesting thing. I did a I did a, a movie about the Beach Boys in which I played a horrible guy named Dr. Eugene Landy. Brian who, Wilson's uh, psychologist, Wilson, psychiatrist, yeah, psychologist. Crazy yeah. manager psychologist who was a really sketchy figure. And even in that, I felt sort of like I'm making this guy so horrendous. And he was not a good guy. But I thought he's got like kids and stuff. And I'm like... Ah, uh, it's it, there's something there's a there's a sort of funny kind of guilt I sometimes can feel playing a real person who's still alive, yeah. and I'm like that, that that they're alive, and they have to sort of see this and 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 deal with this thing that I'm putting out there in the world that I, I hope it's not makes their it doesn't make their lives worse in some way. You I mean, know? I, I, that's lovely. I mean, your your concern could be I don't want to run into them in an alley somewhere, and you know, <laughs> well, there's that too. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's that too. I had um, a Glenn Howerton, the guy from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, on the show. I love that guy. He's such a brilliant. God, I love that guy. He, speaking of like, you two can do rage very, very well. He's a great rage actor, like you are. He's a, he's amazing. Um, he. He was in Blackberry, the 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 new Blackberry movie, and he uh, he played Jim Balsilli, the Canadian head of research and motion, the, uh, Blackberry. Uh -huh. And I talked to him and I said, "So have you met Jim Balsilli yet, the real guy?" And he goes, "No, but he's going to be on the red carpet in an hour." He was, and he did meet him. I, and, I think it was um, very friendly and polite. I think friendly and polite. And then sometimes you realize, because I actually was eventually put on the air with this guy that I played. He was running a radio station I was doing an interview at. I didn't know he was running the place. And they said, hey, we're going to put Kevin Matheny on the air. You can talk to him. And I talked to him. And there was a part of me that thought, ah, he kind of enjoyed it. Actually, he said, eh, I think he kind of was like, ah, I'm in the movies. People made a movie about me. So the hell with it. And so, you know what I mean? He was a little bit like that. So it relieved my guilt a little bit, at least. Um, uh, uh, there's been a lot of movies since, since then. Um, one of the first movies that you got critical acclaim for was, of course, Sideways, which is the other Alexander Payne project that, 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 that kind of blew up 20 years old now. Um, when you walked back on set to do the holdovers after doing a lot of stuff in between, were there... Were there characteristic things that you remembered from the first time with Alexander Payne that you went, oh, yeah, this feels familiar. This mm -hmm. this is how this set works. Yeah. Rehearsing was something in the way we rehearsed, the reading things over and over again, the kind of collegial thing he would do, sort of hanging out, watching movies. He'd say, let's watch The Last Detail. This is a good. And he really wanted Dominic to see these movies. Watch movies Going with you? Yeah, we'll sit and watch movies with Alexander. He'll have he'll, sometimes he'll screen them for the whole crew because he'll just be like, let's watch some movies. And he's wanted to get it in people's heads, that 70s thing, a little bit, not to literally do anything, but just to get people in the spirit of it. And then, you know, you walk on set, and it was interesting because I talk about this a lot with him, and this was the same. It hadn't changed, and there was no reason for it to change, but he doesn't use a video monitor. So he, in, in other words, it, it, you know, he doesn't have this kind of, there's the set where everybody's being filmed, and then there's a live video feed that goes to another sort of room where everybody's sitting, the producers and everybody are sitting around watching a screen. And he eliminates that. He doesn't have that. So that you actually – it creates a very different environment because it's not a hierarchical or divided workspace anymore. It's one place where everybody's working together, and that's a huge difference. I can't tell you what a difference that makes. For for people like me who are listening yeah. to this, never been on a set before, let me make sure I understand it. Um, there there is normally uh, the the performance shot by cameras that feed yes. then goes to a room where producers or and wherever there's a separate space that's and there's a there's a video monitor and you're watching it. They watch it there. That most of the time, most movie sets you go to, and for the past forty years longer. And these are the I who mean, the muckety mucks the. The muckety mucks, and it's a lot of the muckety mucks. And to me, it makes it hierarchical, and it makes it feel like this is where all the important people are, and all the schmucks are over here doing the grunt work right. and stuff. And everybody's sort of sitting over there. That gets eliminated, so that there's no long. And there's also it's a big waste of time moving the thing around and having and all of the it changes everything because all of a sudden everybody's working together. He sits right by the camera. He keeps the crew pretty streamlined. It's not a big, huge crew. You eliminate all the guys who have to do the video for you. It's a whole thing. And it's like, and you have this much more kind of streamlined, small, close, intimate set because he's right next to the camera and he'll talk to you sometimes while the scene's going. Or if you have a sign, if you have a, a solo scene where you have anything to say, he'll talk to you while it's going on. And it's it's incredibly different and special and really, really warm and intimate. It's really nice. 
I, I love that. Uh, just being ca- cautious of time here. I got. I got. I wanted to ask you. This is a Canadian show. Um, <laughs> you won a, a Golden Globe for playing uh, for your role in the film adaptation of uh, a book very familiar familiar to a lot of Canadians. Uh, Barney's version, uh, written by the great Mordecai Mordecai Richler. Um, tell me something. T- t- tell me something you remember about shooting that in Montreal. Oh, I just loved being in Montreal in general. It was cold and it was lovely, but it was uh, it was fantastic. I mean. To be able to absorb the specific atmosphere of that place was fantastic. And I had poutine for the first time in my life. So I remember that. But I loved making that movie. And Montreal was fantastic to shoot in. Loved it. Um, yeah, poutine, poutine's pretty good. <laughs> poutine's pretty good. I'm sorry, that's all I, that's, that was my first memory was poutine. But I, I definitely loved having the, the poutine in, in Montreal. But it was it was awesome. And I felt a great sense of responsibility. I was like making this real Canadian thing and I'm not Canadian and you know I was like I wanted to make sure I didn't screw it up and hopefully I didn't it's like John Adams for us sure (laughs) 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 that that, that hard drinking cigar smoking (laughs) TV producer is very very John Adams for you guys absolutely yeah um this is this is a, a a funny uh thing for you to be I guess to have perspective on, but I am, I'm curious if you have perspective on it. I got to talk to Molly Ringwald the other day, and she was talking to me about how when she was sort of in the Breakfast Club, Pretty in Pink thing that was happening, she knew. She knew there was like a, an attention on her in a way that um, – I guess she was just conscious of it, and she was able to reflect on it afterwards. You've been working for a long time. You've been in big things, in small things. You've shown up in uh, – 30 Rock was one of my favorite things you, you you showed up in. You know, just randomly Paul Giamatti's in, in 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 30 Rock. It does feel like with this best, best actor thing, you're being mentioned on a lot of podcasts and a lot of media. It feels like a lot of eyes are on you right now. I can see you wincing slightly. How mm, – no. <laughs> <laughs> a, a little bit. I mean, you know, it's like well, I, I'm not I'm not hugely in love with a ton of attention, but – I mean, I think it's interesting. I mean, you think about her doing that. She was what? She was a kid. 16, yeah. Really was a kid. That's inconceivable to me to have this kind of attention on you when you're 16. It's bad enough being 16. And then all of this insanity on top of it. I think it's fortunate I'm 56 years old. I have been doing it for a long time. I feel like I've, you know, I've, I've, I've earned some some stripes and things like that. And I feel like it's nice. I mean, it, it's nice. It can get, it can be a lot. It can be a lot, but it's nice. And for the, for the first time in my life, I'm going, this is, this is very nice. I think I'm actually, it's a good time for me to be, to be experiencing something like this. I'm old enough to be able to go like, this is great and wonderful. And I'm still just going to be able to go home and, you know, hang out and have a sandwich and, and, Read a book. I, I um uh, the, the it's not just nice. The uh, I read you say that the Oscar nomination was um, something that made you feel like you've done the right thing with your life. I think that's what it is. I go. It feels like a good affirmation that I feel good about. So the attention feels I can take it because I'm saying to myself, okay, I did all right. I've done a good job, and people are being very nice about it. So just take it and accept it, and don't fight it, and just just. Just be happy with it. Uh, well, it's it's well deserved for this for this film. Um, I, I really enjoyed getting a chance to talk to you, man. Thanks so much for making yeah, the time. Likewise, man. Yeah, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. <laughs>